Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. Here's our first day at the job site. This is actually a four part series on this one because we're doing a driveway add on with concrete for both sides. Also we're doing the front lawn and a most strip all the way around uh, the lawn itself. Also in the first video, this is actually part two, we actually showed the water main break that we hit with the jackhammer and the repair of it. Now we're going to go seven feet widening of this driveway on both sides. And what we're going to do is just follow the shape of the existing driveway. We'll just measure seven feet out all the way around and that's where it's going to be. And the other side of the driveway is seven feet also and it will be adjoining to the neighbor's driveway. There was this little strip in there, two foot strip. As you can see, there's the water line main break right there. We get into detail that on that on our first video on the repair process. So the reason, the main reason for widening this is uh, they got an RV and they need to keep it up in the driveway. So uh, I seen the actual RV and it's about forty. It's a good forty foot or it's a big one. So I'm going to make this a little bit stronger than the average. I'm going to go 5 inches thick. I'm going to dowel into this other driveway every 2 foot. I'm going to use rebar every every 2 foot, 3 8 inch rebar. Both directions. And now we just did a little saw cut over there just to have a nice clean uh, adjoining edge to the existing. Now I'm not going to dowel into the neighbor's driveway. I'm going to dowel into uh, the actual driveway of the house we're working on. Now we're in Costa Mesa and this ground um, has a tendency to be uh, very expansive. In a lot of areas of Costa Mesa so you can see how it's coming out here in big chunks. If you add water it gets uh, you know, more of a clay consistency. So the key to pouring on this type of material is uh, to make sure you really saturate deep. You got to get that water down about six inches, and um, you want to pour when the dirt is still moist. That way, it's at its maximum expansion already that it'll ever get. We're going to be doing a lawn also along this side of the driveway here. We're going to do a, a tile red color around the perimeter of both add-ons to the driveway. We're going to do a wet tool joint on the curbs. And then we're going to do a dust on tile red around the perimeter. And being careful not to get into the field. And that red border six inch trim we're going to do on this driveway area is going to continue around the entire lawn area as well for the most trip. The watering system for the lawn is going to be something that you don't see a lot of. It's going to be an underground water watering system. There's, in other words, no spray nozzles on the surface. It's going to be uh, drip hoses underneath the lawn. good way to conserve water now here's the, here's how we establish our elevation for that add-on we just put a 2x4 on top of the concrete and maintain that slope um, to the 7 feet outside edge And since we disturbed the native soil quite a bit removing dirt with the jackhammer we uh, brought the plate compactor in to break up all these uh, dirt clods. Now you can't wet this down when you run the plate on this type of soil because it will just stick so you compact it first and then you add water for a few days. 
there's the RV that I was talking about now in order to get this most trip that's uh, my son's setting up right here he set this entire job up I actually was on a different job and that's the other job that I actually hit the water main a three inch irrigation water main inside of a park that one we didn't get on film unfortunately that would have been a good one that was shooting about 50 feet straight up like a geyser we're going to maintain seven feet out from that garage for this mo strip and we just measure on each end and pull a string line because you can't measure all in the middle of the garage or anywhere else because it's probably not that straight since it's stucco Now all this moisture is going in about six inches deep. We're going to also put a three-eighths inch rebar all the way around it. The homeowner wanted to do something similar to brick, but I recommended going with uh, red concrete, which is a lot more durable than brick on the dirt. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to color the concrete red, and then we're going to put joints in it every 18 inches. Kind of simulate that brick look, long brick. Brick's good, you know, if it's above grade, but when you get it down in the dirt where there's a lot of watering and edging and mowing and it doesn't hold up very well. Well, depending on the type of brick, but in this case it would have been a red common, which is not very durable on the outside perimeter. Now both of these driveways are going to be about 5 inches. Both of these add-ons are going to be about 5 inches thick. We're going to drill into the driveway every 2 foot and, and drive a 3 8 rebar into it. So we don't want the, the new add-on separating from the old driveway. Um, the idea, at least the homeowner has plans on staining or painting or doing something with the old driveway and bringing it right over the addition so it's all it'll all look the same inevitably when it's all painted up or stained whatever he does to it so you can see how thick it is there because that's about a three and a half inch bender board that's a plastic composite material that you find in basically a landscape department or a gardening area and I'm gonna leave this concrete thick I'll just build up some dirt on the outside edge to hold the concrete in so it doesn't come out into the planting area and now he's using some six inch spreaders between the sidewalk and the form that way he can just dry up uh, put the spreader drive a stake and all you have to do is pick up the form to uh, whatever you're using for your level. And you can just maintain the same slope as the city sidewalk. They're normally at 2% uh, or less. So that'll work for this. And then on that property line mo strip over there, we ended up just pulling out a string line down the uh, existing fence that's on the site in between the two houses and that's how we establish that a lot of times with the back of city sidewalk you can find a metal post buried below grade and um, that'll give you a property line but we didn't find one here so we either never had one or it's been removed over the 50 or 60 years since it's been there Anyway, they actually, after he got this set up, we ran into the neighbor's sprinklers in this other mow strip. So we had to cap a couple of those off. And we didn't realize that until the day of the pour. We showed up in the morning and the neighbor's sprinklers were on. And uh, there's what, and it was coming out right underneath this particular mow strip here on the property line. 
fortunately I had the uh, caps with me so we could screw them in and uh, continue the pour. There's a few roots over here and they were soft because the trees had been removed and they were kind of uh, rotted out so pretty easy to remove. So he's setting this up by himself here and what he's doing he's putting those stakes underneath it to try to hold hold it up to grade so he can nail it and also it's easier to drive your stakes in straight that way if you got it close to grade. The way we establish this grade is off of the driveway. At the top of the driveway we just maintain the slope of the driveway to the outside form. Plus we knew we wanted to put a good two to three inches of topsoil in here before we put the lawn in. So you take all those things into consideration then that's what establishes your grade or elevations. What we're going to do here, since the homeowner did the actual excavating of the old lawn, he went down and rented himself a little ditch witch that you just stand on the back and he scraped it down with that and then loaded it up into a dumpster and got rid of everything. And then we came in and uh, took over on the concrete end and also the laying of the sod and prepping this, the, grit, the sub for the um, lawn itself. He's going to actually do the irrigation system himself. He's going to lay the drip system down. Uh, the spacing on those drip hoses with the emitters built into the hose, those are um, at one foot centers on those drip hoses. And then he's going to have the hose itself spaced one foot apart throughout this entire area. And then we're going to throw two inches of topsoil over that and then we'll lay the sod. So the boards are just kind of run wild for now and then we'll nail them off and cut off the excess. So that most chip right there will actually continue a wet join in the concrete six inch band around the outside edge of that driveway addition and we'll color it too This while, while we're finishing the concrete. Now here's the 3 8 inch holes that we're drilling every 2 feet and then we'll drive 3 inch dowels into that. Now we're compacting here and you got to compact before uh, you wet it down with this type of soil because it's a clay, very sticky. So dry compacting then what we'll do is we'll saturate for about three days try to get the water down at least six inches and it also gives it time to settle now we're laying the 3 8 inch rebar also known as number three it's three eighths or you could say four number four is f four eighths which is half inch number five five eighths six six eighths and so on so I mean you could cut these bars these seven footers a little long and try to drive them into that those three eighths holes but they're most likely gonna bend on you because it's a tight fit so we cut them short that way we can pound them in really good and then we just add more lengths you use more rebar but you get your dowels in there tight and I have been using a, an epoxy system and over drilled the holes yeah we cut these bars you know six inches long slide them into an oversized hole with epoxy in them boom but this drill and drive works just fine now 
we've got rebar all the way around this mow strip. And it's pretty deep. We underpinned everything a little bit here and there just to try to keep the concrete uh, from running out indefinitely. Now we're going to fine tune the front yard. That way we can uh, have the homeowner over the weekend drop his irrigation in, his drip hoses, then we come back, lay the topsoil, and drop sod. Now we're going to put some 2 inch dobies under everything. We're going to pump the concrete in here. I got stable concrete pumping. That's who I usually use. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good day. If you like it, subscribe.